GLSDB hybrids join the fight on Ukraine's side. It's not uncommon to hear from experts, journalists, and ordinary people that NATO countries transfer mostly obsolete and often already decommissioned weapons to Ukraine for its confrontation with Russia. This is partly true, which is quite understandable. Any country thinks first and foremost about its security, but at the same time many examples of modern systems are already being transferred to Ukraine. For example, American M777 howitzers, self-propelled artillery systems, M109 Paladin, Caesar, PZH-2000, anti-aircraft missile systems, NASMs, Irish TSLM, and no doubt the best multiple rocket launchers, XM-142 HIMARS and M270 MLRS. In an early February of this year, the White House announced that the U.S. would supply Ukraine with GLSDB land-based small-diameter bombs, which had never been used anywhere before, and had only been tested for the first time in 2015. It had seemed, what's the big deal? There have already been deliveries of Javelin and NLA anti-tank missiles, and Stinger and Starstreak portable anti-aircraft missiles. They will also supply bombs, some of the small diameter, What's so special about them? Well, these weapons can in fact fundamentally change the course of the war. A few months ago, the delivery of HIMARS helped to stop the Russian offensive, pinpointing the destruction deep behind the Russian army of warehouses with ammunition and fuel, headquarters with high-ranking Russian officers, bridges and pontoon crossings. So what is this GLSDB? And why is its delivery to the Ukrainian army so important? GLSDB stands for Ground Launched Small Diameter Bomb. This bomb is a clear example of how, by combining two completely different systems, which in addition should already have been decommissioned, you can get a fundamentally new weapon, and besides with unique characteristics, and even at a very low cost. Don't believe it's possible? Then watch this video to see for yourself. The US Army in the early 2000s developed a small-sized GBU-39 SDB small-diameter bomb for the inner compartments of stealth aircraft. A recurring problem with stealth aircraft is that they cannot carry weapons on an external sling without significantly increasing their visibility. So the idea was born to develop a small guided bomb that could be placed in large quantities in the internal bomb base of the F-22 Raptor. The SDB bomb has a very narrow, elongated body to fit more in the inner compartment of the aircraft, with the wing folded on the back and attachments on the belly. It's only about 7.5 inches in diameter at 59 feet long. The bomb weighs 285 pounds and is loaded with 36 pounds of impact-resistant explosives in a particularly rugged steel casing, allowing it to engage armored and fortified targets. The bomb is guided by a combination of satellite and inertial guidance with high accuracy. The SDB has a probable circular deviation of no more than 5 to 8 meters. On advanced versions of the munition, the deviation does not exceed 1 meter. The first bombs were delivered to the troops back in 2008. Nowadays, GBU-39 SBD bombs are being phased out and replaced by the more advanced GBU-53 Stormbreaker, equipped with a combined guidance system, millimeter-active radar, semi-active laser, and passive infrared homing, which allows engaging moving targets. However, more than 45,000 GBU-39 SBD bombs were produced for the war in Afghanistan, and more than half of them remain in reserve. In the mid-1990s, Boeing, in cooperation with the Swedish company Saab, proposed an original application for the SBD to equip them with a rocket booster and launch them from the ground, thereby turning the gliding air bomb into a short-range cruise missile. A suitable rocket engine was available. At the time, the U.S. Army was massively scrapping obsolete M26 unguided HIMARS rockets, and there were literally hundreds of thousands of fully operational solid-fuel rockets in storage. All that was left was to combine them with the bombs, which was done. So the GLSDB system is simply an SDB bomb coupled with a rocket motor from the M26 rocket. The 285-pound SBD bomb was even slightly less than the weight of the former M26 cluster warhead, which weighs 345 pounds, so no significant component modifications were required. The GLSDB is launched with the M142 HIMARS or M270 MLRS at a high angle to reach the maximum altitude at apogee. 
The rocket engine is then dropped, the bomb opens the wing and begins to glide towards the target. But not just glide. The bomb is capable of changing direction, descending and ascending. Because of this, these bombs are also called bouncing bombs. Moreover, the GLSDB's trajectory changing capabilities are enormous. In a 2017 test, this munition demonstrated the ability to turn 180 degrees and hit a target 45 miles behind the launcher, which can be useful in densely populated areas where safe launch directions are limited. Such capabilities allow the launcher to engage multiple targets in a single salvo in a variety of directions, or hit targets on the back slopes of mountains and behind high cover. The bomb will simply fly over them, then turn around and hit the target. In general, the maximum range of targets is 90 miles, which is far superior to the range of the GMLRS missiles, which had been previously transferred to Ukraine. They have a range of 50 miles. The striking effect of the GLSDB is more localized compared to the high explosive warhead of the GMLRS, but at the same time is much more effective against buildings and fortified structures. In tests, this bomb was able to penetrate an airplane shelter five feet thick of reinforced concrete. It's true that the speed of flight of the planning GLSDB is less than the ballistic flight speed of the GMLRS, which makes it more vulnerable to air defense. This, however, is offset by the more complex planning trajectory, lower flight altitude, and the ability to perform trajectory maneuvers, plus the smaller size of the bomb itself. It's had an effective dispersion area of only 0.17 square feet. One could argue that the GLSDB occupies an intermediate position between the GMLRS missiles and the MGM-140 Attackums tactical missiles with a range of up to 185 miles. But at the same time, their cost is only $40,000, taking into account the disposal of decommissioned aircraft bombs and virtually free rocket engines. By comparison, the GMLRS missile costs, according to various estimates, from $100,000 to $160,000, and the Attackums missile up to $2.3 million. It's also necessary to compare the characteristics of the GLSDB with the characteristics of the Russian multiple launch rocket systems GRAD, Smirch, and Tornado S, which they use in the war against Ukraine. The maximum range of GRAD missiles is 26 miles. Smirch is 45 miles, and Tornado S is 75 miles, with a huge dispersion reaching up to a third of a mile. With this ammunition, the Ukrainian army will be able to destroy targets up to 90 miles from the front line. For example, it would reach airfields from which Russian planes raid Ukraine. This would force Russian aviation to move farther away. That is, planes to the front line will fly longer and they'll have less time to work on targets. And given the cheapness of the ammunition, Ukraine could be supplied with thousands of them, which would dramatically affect the nature of combat operations. Don't forget that a couple of hundred of GMLRs stopped the Russian offensive, and here are thousands and with a range twice as long. Of course, the characteristics of Russian air defense systems, Tor and Panzer, which will protect Russian soldiers from these munitions, theoretically allow them to shoot down. But this changes everything. Previously, it was necessary to repel the strikes of dozens of GMLRS missiles. At least half of them were penetrated. Proof of this is the Antonov Bridge in Kyrgyzstan, which was hit by dozens of missiles fired by their HIMARS. And if not dozens, but hundreds of rockets will be launched every day. Will the Russian air defense system be able to cope? Won't it get drowned out? Well, we'll find out soon enough. The only downside to the GLSDB is that it's still a very young weapon and the U.S. has not yet had time to produce it in large numbers. Do we even have anything to say since the Pentagon only plans to order them from Boeing? But on the other hand, there's not much need to produce anything. Take the GBU-39 SBD bombs from the warehouse and the rocket engines for the M26 missile from another warehouse, connect them, and the GLSDB is ready. How the bombs, or more precisely, the GLSDB rocket bombs will affect the war in Ukraine? We'll find out soon. That's all for now. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. It's the best reward for our hard work. Please also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There will be many more interesting stories about modern weapons.